Good morning, Sub Traders. Welcome on this Wednesday, December 11th. How's everybody doing this morning? Good to see you all. Good to see you. Grant, good to see you. Michael, Bonnie, Phil, everybody. Grant, everybody. Chuck, Lita, everyone. Hope I didn't miss anybody, but welcome back, everybody. Let me tell you, yesterday was a very interesting day. A uh, couple of very, very good moving stocks I want to talk about. Uh, we did really, really well yesterday. Just the pre-market, we killed it. Killed it yesterday. I mean, you know, when's the last time some of you guys see stocks up two, three hundred percent? I know I talk about this all the time, but you know, seriously, it really does happen. Uh, we had a couple of great stocks, you know, even like um, talking a little bit about this A A U P H. Just been a phenomenal mover. Stock's been gapped up at eight dollars, went to fourteen. We've been trading a couple of days. Stock did really, really well. Uh, that one was phenomenal. The C L V S trade. Let me just bring that one up. Um, Getting there, getting there. All right, so that one right there, we had a really, really nice move too. Also, that one from 1120 uh, to 1260 PTI, which is also going back on my watch list today. This stock has not only been a good day trade, it's been a phenomenal, phenomenal swing trade. Look at that long term chart. And let me tell you something looking at this stock, as of right now, I don't think this is, this is a short squeeze, okay? Not at all. CO, um, and then we had this really stock that got crushed yesterday. This is CONN. That was a nice, nice mover stock. Uh, just going to type something in here really quick. Now, I just want to kind of, one of the, want to talk about what happened yesterday uh, before we start going through the watch list because. We did have a, a, a really, really good day, and, you know, we're getting close to the holiday season, so we only got about another week uh, going into next week. I think it's going to get really slow. Remember, Christmas is on the 25th of December, which is literally two weeks away, which is pretty scary. But um, probably we're going to be busy all the way going up until um, probably the 23rd, I would say. Now, regarding uh, Mike is a little hot. Oh, that's good. Hopefully that sounds a little bit better. I mean, it's my being excited. But, you know, let, let's let's go through some of the stocks that we're going to watch. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little funny story that happened yesterday. And I, and I know Josh was actually, when he was doing Traders Talk yesterday uh, in class, he was talking about that I made a mistake and he wanted to share it with you. And you know what? I, it's okay to make mistakes, okay? And I want to tell you something really quick what happened. I did a trade yesterday, and uh, thank God for the TCCO. Oops. I typed in a wrong. I typed in a wrong window. The TT, uh, the TCCO trade right there. We uh, that was a really nice, nice mover right there. You can see how the stock. Oh, not really a good chart right there. Bring a five minute. Okay, so you can see how the stock literally went from four dollars all the way to ten dollars. And what happened with that TTCO? Um, I bought that stock and I was taking a profit. I had a really, I had a pretty decent profit on that stock. And instead of selling it, now, you know, you always want to put limit orders. The stock had a very big spread. You had to be a little bit advanced to trade the stock, the, the TCCO. And you, But what happened, I went out there to sell it. And damn it, you know what I ended up doing? I ended up buying more. And I was like, I was freaking out. I'm like, and it was all because I know some of the guys always ask me questions regarding about hotkeys, right? Well, when it came to the hotkeys, you know, I hit the wrong button. So instead of hitting uh, limit, you know, offer, I hit market buy. And I don't, whatever, fat fingers, you know how we are all the time. And this is why I'm not too crazy about hotkeys. Hot but the stock was moving so quickly. And because I had multiple level two screens up and running, I was looking at another stock that helped me. Uh, actually, it was another stock that we did really well on it. But anyway, I sold the stock. And from being up, I ended up being double what I was down. So I was up like, I don't know, like not even that much. It was like whatever, $1,000. ended up being down like almost 2000 because, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, I was actually down 1000 I lost, and you got to remember this. I was up 1000 and then I lost that 1000 and then And then because I had 2,000 shares, I ended up being down 1000 okay? So I didn't wasn't down 1000 my account. I was actually down 2000 because I lost 1000 that I made. I don't know if anyone ever looks at that way. But that's how much I lost. That's how crazy the stock went down like that. So anyway, um, you know, I changed my hat because, you know, and that was a, you know, what of a decent profit. But I ended up flipping my hat. I said, you know what, let me go look at something else. 
And uh, because you know what happens, you start getting a little cocky and a little greedy, and then you start going out there and you say, you know what, let me make my money back. I'll keep trading at this and that. And you know, you end up chasing it. And you know what happens? You get angry. So I'm not looking to bore you with this, but you know, I, um, we put, I put my head down and the it was the LITB trade. I think it was. Uh, I think it was this one right here. No, it wasn't this one. FTSV. It was that one. Yeah, it was this one right here. Uh, kind of jumped right back into this one, made my money back, and uh, that I lost, and I was profitable, and it wasn't a great winning day for me. But you know what? I made my money back, and I called it quits, and I said, you know what? Stock, you know, I, I got caught up in that. I just wanted, I just wanted to cover my losses because, uh, you know, obviously I don't want to end up being a losing day, but. You know, this one we did trade it. This one did really well. This one from 29 down to up to 35. And you can see it had a really, really nice move. A $15 stock up to 34. I said, you know what? That TCCO was a great winner. It was great at the open. But you had to get in and out of it. And what killed me on that. And this is what you got to remember. This is one of the most important things. Everybody wants to trade stocks, but nobody wants to take time to learn it. The biggest thing you learn in our lessons, in our classes, like in phase one, lesson one, is tradable, not tradable. And that stock had one nasty, nasty um, spread. And if you didn't get at a good price, let me tell you something, it definitely hurt you. So I uh, just want to kind of give you guys a little heads up on that. And you're right, Ken, you're getting instant gratification. You start playing, trying to get even, and you end up making a mistake. I just want to share that with you because, you know, I do lose money too. And if I didn't, and if no one ever told you, that's the people you want to stay away from. It's like saying, oh, I'm married and never had a fight with my wife. OK, they say, you know, it always it strengthens a relationship. OK, if you can't deal with an argument with your spouse and be able to work things out, then that's obviously that's why you guys get divorced. But if you do, that's a strength in relationship. Trading is the same thing. I was kind of related to, to to everything of everyday life. But when you go out there and trading, you know what? Sometimes the divorce is even more is this healthy because if you're in a stock and you're like, you know what? I don't know how to fight it. I keep going back and it losing, losing more. You end up making you broke. So you got to be careful of that. All right. So anyway, let's get back to what's moving this morning, because whatever happened yesterday, the 200 percent mover like the TCCO, like the like the like the FTSV, uh, there's a whole new list that's there today. Now, if you look here in the big percentage gainers, listen, I'm a little getting a little I'm watching this stock um, closely. I don't know what's going on with the CEI. But it's been moving yesterday. It had a nice little pop yesterday. It had a great move after hours, and it's gapping up pretty big, which is on a downtrend. Now, some of you remember the stock. Uh, the stock did some reverse stock splits. You can see how the stock had a big, big spike. We traded the stock before. It was one of those crazy, crazy stocks. Huge short squeeze. Um, but you know, I'm, I would just want to keep an eye. I would keep an eye on it. I won't go crazy with it right now. But you know what? It was eight. It was 75 cents yesterday. It's literally, if you look at it, where it closed yesterday and where it is today, something's going on with it. And when there's smoke, there's fire. So keep that on your watch list. Another stock that we, we, I'm a, you know, a little bit of a fan of, but I don't know if it's too much of a day trade. Chewy's doing pretty good, too. Uh, Chewy had really good earnings. They said it was like 40% or something like that, I think I heard. And they had a good outcome over um, on the long term. So Chewy's a new IPO. A little bit of a little bit of a fast moving stock because it is an IPO, not too many outstanding shares out there. So the spreads are pretty big. So be careful of that one. All of you guys have been trading this stock right here, MYSZ. You know why I'm not a fan of it. Look at the look at the level three, not that many orders out there. So you don't know who's buying it, who's selling it. Remember, we need that level three to make things worth it. Now, this stock right here is taking a huge hit right here. PLCE uh, place. You can see a stock, um, you know what, you want to hold overnights. Look, 90, 85, wake up 80, 75, I don't know, maybe we'll come back. Listen, you can see stock breaking lower lows from 100 back in July. You wake up this morning, what do you do now, okay? It's just a matter of time when these things crash. You know what, one of the biggest things we teach you, and I always repeat this all the time, we don't teach you how to make money at Cybertrain University. We teach you how to stop losing it. The winners take care of themselves. It's the losers like this that people don't know how to take losses that end up getting caught of this one, and that's how they blow up their accounts. So if you knew how to day trade, you would have got out of this position way, way, way before to find out you wouldn't be in this predicament. You, um, AUPH, we're going to keep an eye on that one too. That one, once again, great mover, great pop-up. Stock's got a big push. Something that something's going on with it. It's not only beginning a good day trade, but it's now becoming a good swing trade. SBGL is another one we keep an eye on the watch list. 
Uh, this one breaking a nice little trend up, new higher highs right there also. A um, little bit more of a decent spread. It's not up a lot. It's got great iceberg orders out there, great level three quotes. And I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing it also on the level four where I'm seeing consistent orders been out there for a while. So the stock is going to probably be a little bit more easy to trade. All right. Um, I'm writing uh, my puts from overnight on Palace, Kevin saying. All right. Let's give him a round of applause. Probably doing good on that. You know, look, just really quick, because I want to get guys get ready. Uh, I know you guys got classes coming up, and I want to get you ready for the open. But you know what? I just want to make a comment regarding about all you options traders out there, you know, that want to trade options. I always tell everybody this. You know, options is the last thing you're supposed to be trading, okay? It's not the first thing. And people trade options because they think they can't afford to trade the stock. And that is complete nonsense, okay? You see some of the stocks we trade. Once you, you got to be to be a good options trader, I say this all the time, and I'll repeat it a thousand times before it sticks in everyone's head. You damn well better know how to day trade first if you want to be a good swing trader or an options trader. Okay, who's more wealthy, the guys that own the house or the people that rent the house? Okay, so the thing is this when once you know how to find stocks that are moving and you're like, you know, I like this stock. I don't want to tie up my cash. I need my day trading. I need to be liquid for my day trading. But I'm going to do a put call, and maybe I'll, I'll, and it might work out because I'm kind of feeling, you know, what I see with what I learned in Fausto's classes. You know what? Now, now it's probably an option trade. And guess what? Bam! That's how you nail it. Okay? Not to sit there and say, oh, what option playing a play today? What's everybody looking at options? No, that's not your first thing. It's it's day trading first, and then you worry about maybe you consider an option, and that's how you become a good options trader. Anyway, Ben's also just posting out a couple of uh, uh, a couple of moves out there. Got the short out there, 12 cents on the P-tie. Good for you. All right, guys. Good luck for you. All right, guys, everyone. Good luck today. Enjoy class today. We'll get started commentating in about, in about another 10 minutes. All right, guys? Good luck. Happy trading today.